Okay, my friends. Hey, welcome back to Staying Strong for Marriages. You guys, I'm, I gotta be honest, I'm just a normal guy. You know, I started a YouTube channel and uh, I've just I've been trying to figure out how can we help people survive in this world with all the hardships and the t difficult things that go on. This all started for me when I had a couple people reach out to me and tell me that their spouse was really, really struggling with the Lord, with believing in God, with the faith that they had, uh, simply because they did not know how to really properly address and probably more importantly deal with the emotional difficulty that they were having um, with the knowledge of an abortion. Uh, it did happen to be that both of the individuals that I um, kind of heard about or were told about um, through their spouse, yeah, they, these individuals, they came from a Catholic background. So I want to look at that and then where we're kind of headed with this today is we're going to be doing a just a quick overview of a few different online sources in case you feel like, well, I don't know where to go, or I don't know who to talk to, or this is just um, very difficult. So I guess I'll just start from the beginning of my story. Um, I had someone message me over Facebook, and they kind of told me, you know, our marriage was going along pretty good, uh, but then everything kind of fell apart one day, and kind of trace it back to the beginning, and a lot of it had to do with uh, an early abortion in their marriage. So they shared with me this um, video on YouTube, Foreknown is what it's called, an abortion story, and, excuse me, an abortion story, and it's um it's something i really didn't know about i mean yeah i've been involved in the church but i was never really like involved in the say political church do you know what i mean the church is that some people they really get into certain aspects like political activism or say social justice or things like that of course i'd heard the stories but i didn't really know anybody that had personally like ever disclosed to me this type of experience like i said it wasn't something that my wife and i had in our history so that's kind of what brought me to this. I realized, well, if this is something that's really coming across um, the bow of people's marriages, you know, uh, shots being fired, and things that people don't know how to really face, well, I want to cover it, you know? Now, I'm not an expert, and I want to always say thank you to those of you who have come on the channel as guests and spoken to things in very powerful ways that I never have been able to address as well as you did. Let me just uh, take a quick moment. As I was looking at some of this information, one thing that really uh, popped out to me was if you're in a marriage and you find that you're running across an incredible amount of like anger or drama or upset and you can't really understand what the source of it is, you're hearing that you've done like maybe a lot of bad things or you're a bad spouse, but you can't, it doesn't really seem to make sense. One thing I would suggest is to kind of pump the brakes and, uh, you know, not take things so personally. Start to consider that there may be something in the equation that you don't know about, a secret uh, that maybe your spouse hasn't been willing to disclose to you. In a lot of these stories, you hear of people with a lot of emotional upset, um, anger, you know, that is put on probably you, their spouse, and um, undeservingly. Well, I'm just saying, if, if you find yourself in a strange marriage, maybe early on, you can't explain what in the world is going on. Um, I would consider maybe that abortion or some kind of, like, abuse or something like that in the past um, could be really what you're up against, and it's not like um, you're a horrible person or a bad spouse. It's just there's something that... It's just, uh, you know, underneath the surface, what's really going on, and you don't know about it. So let's jump over quickly. This is a cool video. It's not that long, 13 minutes, but it's a, it was a good one, and I, it opened my eyes a lot. Now, I've told you guys before that I went to Catholic high school, but I'm not from a Catholic background. Uh, but, I mean, I, I'm not in this like, camp where, you know, oh, you know, Catholics aren't Christians or something like that. Like, no, 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 I don't think that at all. I don't know why people think that. But anyways, I've heard people talk about it still. So. Uh, it's not where I'm coming from. Okay, so if we go to the, this is um, from www.vatican.va, and this is from their archives and from the catechism. So catechism is just a basically um, breakdown of how they take the different verses from the scriptures and kind of, you know, apply those to these different uh, different topics. So abortion, it's no surprise, like this is, uh, you know, it's seen as a sin, a, a serious sin. Um, Catholic Church is a very strong position on human life and, you know, marriage, and you can see that especially in their views on contraception and really... Uh, they have a, str a strong stance I've, I've learned over the past few years that, you know, God's will is really for people to bring, like, godly offspring. That that's, that's kind of one of the big, um, say, purposes of, of marriage, you know. And this is why one of the reasons that, you know, like, like masturbation or other things are seen unfavorably. If you're an atheist and you're like, why, why do these people think, you know, masturbation is a sin? Because it's, a, it's an unfruitful practice, you know. It doesn't bring forth, like, the children and the offspring that God hopes to have. And any of the experiences that parents experience, the understanding of the miracle of birth, what it means to be parents and stuff like that. Um, so anyways, that's not what I'm really here to do. If you go to 2272, so, uh, yeah, you can just search. Um, I'll give you the link for this. But what we have here is that 
it says, okay, formal cooperation abortion constitutes a grave offense. And you can see that here and that the church attaches canonical penalty of excommunication to this crime against human life. Now, that may be where people are coming down and having such troubles. I mean, in these stories, I've heard, well, you know, Catholics or like in the stories that I heard, oh, my Catholic spouse really has, has really gotten out of the church because they feel that they've maybe been excommunicated or that they don't belong or that God will never accept them or God will never forgive them. And I wanted to at least start here and um, really highlight this because I think this is very important and it's something that I can do quite easily despite my lack of personal experience on this issue. And highlight this, the church does not thereby intend to restrict the scope of mercy. So please take, you know, take that to the bank, anybody out there who may be watching this and thinking, well, I'm destined for hell. I mean, God is never going to forgive me. This clearly is, is saying the opposite. The church does not thereby intend to restrict the scope of mercy. So yeah, it's a serious crime. But with confession, um, forgiveness is, is available to people. I just think that's hugely important because it seems like people get stuck on that rather from like cultural ideas or stuff they picked up. And maybe a lot of people, they don't want to go and, you know, look up the catechism on their Saturday or something. Well, here you go. I'm doing this for you. So I, I hope that helps. I really, really hope that helps. I hope you go, you go back to the scriptures and you look at the the perfect atoning sacrifice of Christ if you're a Christian or if you're a Catholic person who hasn't studied the scriptures well. You know, if you've repented of the sin, I, I, I don't see anything from everything that I've read and I've, everything that I've understand, understood that there's any uh, problem that you would have any sense that, oh, I've committed an, um, an unforgivable sin in the eyes of God. I just don't see, I don't see that here. And that's what this sentence seems to say, okay? So it's 2272, you can look it up, or you can use the link that I'll provide in the notes below. Now, I went along and I asked some friends who do a lot of, like, ministry and pray and, you know, try to advocate and say, like, marriage, or not marriage, but like pregnancy crisis centers. I said, okay, you guys are involved in this. Um, you know, what, what, what do you know? What can you tell me? And they told me about this organization called Support After Abortion. Here's their website. I bring you first and foremost to uh, this section here. They have a um, virtual conference coming up, but what you can do is if you give them, uh, click on new user, and then you give them an email address, um, they will invite you to basically, they have, you can see here, um, spring 2021, watch 20 speakers, and the live stream of Viable, the play from April 22nd to May 6th. So we're before May 6th, 2021, and you can watch this or listen to it it's a, basically a stage production done at a church. The name of the play is called Viable. And it was, I, I, you know, I listened to it this week while I was cooking dinner and, and I, I thought about it and it's, um, it was pretty intense. I mean, I think what I really realized is this is a super intense topic. And I understand why it doesn't get spoken of that often. It's really, really difficult uh, emotionally. And I'm not gonna comment on why, but that was just what I found to be true, even as I listened to it and looked at it this last week. I was like, wow, this is a good play. And like I said, you can watch it for free. Just, um, yeah, you can go in, and it's embedded in their site. So, and you can just play it uh, in a stream. They have a lot of other like YouTube videos and things of that nature. And I'll come back in a second and maybe look at a couple more of those. Let me just put this screen up. They put some, sunk some money into their website and it looks pretty cool. And they have these uh, cool slideshows. So I called and spoke with them this week uh, and just told him who I was and what I was doing. I didn't know much about this topic. I didn't have personal experience with this topic, but as a YouTube creator, I wanted to try to provide something, you know, to viewers and subscribers. Um, maybe we come across somebody who has this in their past. We don't even know what to say. Um, and this is an interesting little thing right here. It says nine out of 10 people, they don't know where to go to get help. Let me give you some other statistics that I got while speaking with them. In no particular order, they said that there was a movie called Unplanned, and this is an older movie, but something that they really liked. And then like we said, uh, Viable was uh, that stage production available on their site through May 6th. Additionally, some other people have told me about a, I think, Roe v. Wade a video or movie that just came out, say, in the last month, somewhere around the early part of 2021. I haven't seen it. Um, I heard that, like, it's also very emotional. Like, some people were upset. Um, I think upset because of the deception. This is what I, this is what someone told me, that, that the, like, the deception of the whole thing. I don't know what deception that meant, like, if the facts were skewed or the way that they picked jurors or, or information that was allowed to be submitted or not, or it's just the whole thing is kind of a, a big wake-up call. I'm not sure. But something to check out. Uh, additionally, here's some stats I, I got while speaking from the folks at Support After Abortion who were very helpful and gave me a lot of their time, and it was really, it was really eye-opening. They said about a quarter of women will have some experience with abortion a quarter by the time, if you look at women uh, at the age of 45, about one in four women by the age of 45 will have uh, some history of abortion. 
Um, that was from a researcher, sociologist, uh, Gutenmacher. And I'll try to give you some more information. I'm sure they have that on their site. They just uh, did a large observational trial, uh, not trial, but um, they've been doing a lot of research, trying to figure out, you know, what do we know? How can they be better at what they're trying to do? Here's some other stats. 80% um, remain anonymous initially. And they did tell me that a lot of times people, they're really hesitant about getting involved with a, a pro-life or a abortion recovery organization if they know that it has like religious or Christian undertones. I think probably because, you know, people are worried about feeling any more negative emotions. Um, and that's really too bad because I think, um, you know, personally, I think there's amazing healing and ministry that the Holy Spirit, the Christians call it, the Great Counselor, you know, provides. And uh, to miss out on that is kind of a bummer, in my opinion, but I understand it, it makes sense to me why there's that hesitation. It says 58% uh, of women really wanted to speak to someone who had had an abortion. So they wanted someone who could relate, and um, I get that. You know, when people call me about divorce and separation, I get that all the time. You know, oh, I mean, I have these good friends of mine. They're trying to be helpful, but they just, they just don't get it. And so it's, it's, yeah, it's kind of being able to have walked the road before it makes a lot of sense. What else? They say another stat, 50% of uh, abortions um, happen to people who have had previous abortions. So one of their big takeaways from the research they've done has been, well, you know, if we can help people heal, if we can really help people heal and not kind of redo the same thing as before, then we can really get like a, a large, we can do a lot, you know, kind of the Pareto principle. I mean, if you see a, a problem in society, you know, focus on the 80-20, you know, try to focus on the, the largest proportion of people or the largest proportion of society where this is, you know, a big thing. And what they said is um, they learned 50% said of abortions, um, yeah, occur um, among people who have like already gone through that before. So it seems like the healing didn't happen maybe and, and maybe people still don't know where to go or what to do. A couple other things, 9 out of 10 don't know where to go for help. And you guys saw that in this little, if I move this over, you can read it better. But 9 out of 10 people, they don't know where to go for help. They, they don't know where to go for help. You know, they, they're not sure who to talk to. Additionally, guys, forgive me, I've gotten all the way through this and I haven't talked about resources for men. There are resources for men, including in that first video you saw that guy talking. But uh, there really are, I think, one of the things that I've seen to become a new change is that, uh, you know, the, this industry or this, this ministry, this, this segment of ministries, is really realizing that men are deeply, deeply affected. And like I tried to start out this video, I heard of a man who was really, really struggling, you know, walked away from, from basically the faith because he thought, if I'm already damned, I mean, why come and hang around, you know? And, and it led to, you know, a lot of, I mean, difficulty, uh, drinking and stuff like that. And yeah, so I'm tr trying to hopefully, through theology and these ministries, help people escape, say, a life of, you know, drowning the sorrows, but rather accepting the, the love and acceptance of God. Um, who comes to seek and save the lost, who is the friend of sinners, you know. And I don't say that in a judgmental way. I mean, all of us have different things that we go through, you know. And so, um, uh, so the next thing I learned about was something called Heritage House. And I believe this is the proper site, Heritage House 76. It was started by a group in San Diego, a husband and wife. They saw a news article, uh, like seriously like a newspaper, where these little feet, you can see it here, these little feet of a child were like held up in a picture uh, by someone in the newspaper. And it was talking about, you know, abortion and stuff like this and they thought man what a great icon what a great you know not a bad sense but a symbol you know um a kind of a brand or a trademark for um the pro-life movement these are children you know and this is uh, real so what it looks like heritage house seems to do 76 is they seem to put out like a lot of dvds promotional materials posters jewelry like different things to help uh, kind of on the educational side of things so if this is something you want to put up i don't know where you'd put this up i guess if you had a clinic or you know you want to put up in the church or i mean it seems um yeah, it seems like that's kind of what they do and some of the things they offer. So additionally, there may be another heritage house, but something about 2,600 centers in the United States serving people, kind of like pregnancy crisis centers and things of that nature. So of course, these are nonprofits and you could always think about investing in them with your dollars, your donor dollars and thinking about, you know, how you can be involved in that way. Going on to this issue of resources for men, I was told that there was a gentleman, Dr. Joseph Roebuck. He is a volunteer, it says, with the Foundations of Life and Support After Abortion. They did a virtual conference, and he was a presenter, and he shared his journey of healing after an abortion. So I want to really make it clear again, yes, like I think we're all well aware like this is, uh, affects women hugely. And I think mostly we think that there's resources only for women, and guys kind of just get... Well, what I heard is that a lot of times guys are told, hey, you know, this isn't your body, this isn't your baby, so your job is to, you know, just go over, be quiet, and support me in whatever the woman's decision is. And a lot of times, guys, maybe they didn't want it, you know? Maybe they didn't want it, and they're they're like, man, you know, man, what in the world? Or, you know, of course, there's all different kind of variations of that. But I just want to make sure everyone knew, you know, 
these people, they're doing great work and they're really trying to figure out how can we support men and women in the healing process. Additionally, because of that Dr. Joseph Roebuck that we just looked at, Foundations for Life you just mentioned, there is another story on here and you can find him, Charles Bryan's testimony. And then there's all kind of other testimonies here. I clicked on it and this is, I guess, Charles Bryan. It looks like Foundations for Life works primarily in Florida. But of course, there's like little organizations like this all over the place. I was asking, I said, you know, how outgunned um, are, say, Christian ministries like this as far as donor dollars and funding? Because, I mean, let's be honest, if you're outmatched, you know, $10 to one and you're trying to have some social impact or there's definitely a narrative behind this type of thing. And going back to this original play that we talked about, Viable, that's one of the big, that's one of the big themes in this is that there was a lot of, I mean, I don't want to spoil it, but there was a lot of, say, definitions of, of what is a child and, and all this type of stuff. Well, it's really a war of words. It's a war of ideas. It's a war of, I guess you could say, deception. You know, what is freedom? What will help people? Um, can you just move on and have your best life? Um, or is it better to face the fears of, say, poverty, and, and but, you know, have your, have your child or, you know, figure out how to do that as a couple? Again, I've never walked down this road, so I cannot, I, I would not pass any judgment, I, and I don't pass any judgment. I just, um, you know, my goal is to try to bring some resources to light, um, either in the preventative side of things or in the care side of things, in the recovery side of things. I, uh, I don't have much else to say than that, really, today. I just, um, I'll leave the links in the description. We'll see. You guys can pray. We've talked about maybe doing an interview or I'd offer to anyone out there. You can do an anonymous interview with me or you can, if you want to put your face on the screen. For some reason, people really get nervous about putting their face on the screen, I guess. I, I don't know what the big deal is, but um, yeah, you, you know, you can come and you can tell your story and you can give your testimony of either how God healed you or just how it is difficult to try to, you know, highlight or advocate for what's going on. I mean, um, how we can recover in life, how we can live in victory. And like I said, it's very difficult. It's very, very difficult. You know, I wish I had more answers. I don't. Um, but I think these people are really, really trying hard. You know, they're really, really, really trying hard. And I think you can find fellowship, you know. We've talked before about Dietrich Bonhoeffer. And um, so it just blows up a little bit. We've talked about these books before. Life Together and Dietrich Bonhoeffer. It's a classic work. Um, you can see it here. This is how to spell his name. I mean, he talks about the fellowship of people confessing sin to each other and how that's like really the, the true form of Christianity. It's, it's not a me by myself following God with my Bible. It's being honest and living in community with people and having the fellowship of sinners and realizing we're not alone in our sin, that we have um, a lot in common with other people, normal people just like us, you know, and that God is good and God loves, loves us together. Another book that we talked about before, Richard Foster, classic work, the Celebration of Discipline. I don't know why it's hard to see here. Is it even on here? It's really hard to see. Yeah, celebration of discipline. You know, Richard Foster. This is a this is a great book, and he talks about the same thing that when you confess sins to your brother, you're no longer alone with your hardship and your and your emotions. You can bear one another's burdens. There's a ton of stuff. You know, there's a lot of reasons why I love Christianity, and these are certainly some of them. So, um, hopefully, these people can help connect you, or help you, your friends connect to the right people. The goal is to make it, you know, and um, the goal is to follow God and let Him help us. So. Well, we will see you guys next time. Thanks so much for stopping by.